Why not? Hello everyone, I'm Marky e. Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. The name of the program is Tri-City Sports Now. We're on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities, where we own the Tri-Cities with the best sports talk lineup in the market. And uh, this is, we're going to go right into Marky's monologue before telling you what's on tap for today's show. Of course, talk a lot about recruiting. Recruiting, I mean, uh, what can you make of it? Tennessee's recruiting level, it went from 60 to 28 overnight. They had a decent day. Of course, four years ago, they had the number five ranked class in the country and just are coming off a four and eight season. So what does it all mean? You don't know. But there is some positive signs. There's also a really petty sign that I want to talk about here on Tri-City Sports Now. But, uh, and a lot of other things here uh, going on. I want to talk about Wofford's victory, though, last night. Because last night, I think it did take a major step for the Southern Conference to get two bids into the NCAAs. Now, I'd like it to be in a manner in which there were two deserving teams. And I'm not sure that there aren't two deserving teams out of the Southern Conference. I've always been a big backer of the SOCON. The problem is the people that do the picking don't necessarily agree. They think that I'm being a homer. But I've watched the SOCON since, uh, you know, Chattanooga was nationally ranked in the early, uh, in the early 80s. I remember when South Carolina, I don't, I think in a year in which South Carolina won 20 games with Bill Foster as their coach, and Bill Foster had taken Duke to the Final Four a couple of years before. But uh, in that season, now they were an independent, but uh, remember those? <laughs> anyway, the, South Carolina was independent, but what happened was that they actually lost to two SOCON teams, Chattanooga and ETSU, that season. Probably prevented them from getting an NCAA berth, but what it also probably did was increase the stock of the SOCON because Chattanooga made the NCAAs. It was a year NC State won it all, the cardiac pack against Houston that year. But also that was a year ETSU got an NIT bid when that was a little more prestigious than what it is now. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more. So that's Basketball History 101. We're going to go into it a little bit more. You see, Wofford beating North Carolina is a sort of non-conference victory that makes one take notice during the point of a college basketball season when really nobody's watching. Come on, you know. Terriers have an 8-4 and four record, which isn't sensational. I mean, North Carolina's 10-2. and two. ETSU, before playing Georgia Southern tomorrow, they're 7-4. and four. But the thing is, the Terriers' losses aren't bad losses. Lost to South Carolina. All right, they're down, but Final Four team last year. California, Texas Tech, and North Carolina Asheville, which is a contender in the Big South Conference. A lot of people think that they're one of the better mid-majors. So let's just say that Wofford, by virtue of proving themselves against North Carolina, wins the SoCon outright. They win the regular season title. Let's say they do it and they only lose two games in the conference. By the way, there's one more out-of-conference game for the Wofford Terriers. They play Harvard. Harvard is 4-6. and six. That's in early January. It's in South Carolina. I mean, I, I'll take the Terriers in that one. But let's just point this out. Let's say Wofford wins out regular season. Out of conference, it'll be Wofford. Let's say they go from here on out. There are 20 more games to go, 18 and 2, which would be. I may. I, am I missing? Because I just said 18 and 2. They can't possibly be playing 19. There may be one more out of conference game against just some terrible team that I'm forgetting about or something. But uh, roughly, anyway, that would leave going into the conference tournament in Nashville 26 and 6 record for Wofford. If I, my math may be a game off, I, I don't think so, though. And they didn't experience victories against not only North Carolina, but also Georgia Tech. And if you really want to argue the point, in addition to the you know bad teams that are, are they even Division I teams, they also defeated Coastal Carolina, which is 6-6 six and six out of the Sun Belt. It's not that big of a victory, to be brutally honest with you. And the Terriers have also beaten North Florida, which has become a respectable basketball program, but they're in the A-10 Sun 
Uh, their RPI is an you know atrocious. It's a hundred something. Most of the guys in the A Sun, you figure it'd be two hundred something. So, but it's still North. Florida. It's not going to impress me. Oh, you beat North Florida, the Ospreys. My goodness, you know, people are still saying, are the Ospreys still NAIA? I remember they used to be real good in baseball in the NAIA. Are they still in the NAIA? You know, they're not in the NAIA. You know. But that's the sort of respect that a program like that gets, and that's why ETSU had to leave the Atlantic Sun. That's why they never should have joined it in the first place. But they had to after the short-sighted decision of Paul Stanton, David Mullins, to drop football and then basically lose all the prestige that their athletic program had accumulated until now. But let's go back to the conference rival. What's good for the SOCON conference rival is probably good for ETSU, in my opinion. So let's say 26 and 6 will go off. Or, I mean, I, and I know that's asking a lot, but I'm just, the theory is out there. You beat North Carolina. You don't just beat them. You lead the entire second half. That shows me maybe you're ready for bigger and better things. And maybe you could go through and, and, are a worthy contender. A lot of people picked Wofford to win the SoCon this year. So let's say they do it in the regular season. They only lose two games. I don't know. You'll give them ETSU and VMI. Just to, <laughs> that would probably be a bad loss. I mean, let's face it, but I'm just throwing something out there, you know. Okay. Then we'll say Wofford wins two games in Asheville, loses the conference final to, ah, oh, heck, let's be homers, ETSU. Okay. Well, that gives Wofford a 28-7 and seven record. 28-7, and seven, you figure a victory against North Carolina and Georgia Tech, plus the dominance of the Southern Conference, you'd be pushing a national ranking. I mean, look, Gonzaga played for the national championship last year. I don't think, I mean, Wofford's got a long way to go before their Gonzaga in terms of program prestige, but look at what Creighton was doing last year, nationally ranked all year long. Could Wofford have a similar run? That's all I'm asking. Could Wofford have a similar run? Could they be a number 21 at this time? 28-7 victory against North Carolina, depending how good North Carolina is, depending how good Georgia Tech is, for that matter. Possible. I mean, it's on the table. Let's let's discuss it. It's, it's on the table now. And they'd be in the discussion for an at-large bid. I do realize, and it's one of the problems that I have with the NCAA tournament, for that matter, college basketball in general, is that the NCAA tournament does favor the major market teams. That's where the money is. That's where the recognition is. I've heard theory. I remember one year that all the number one seeds made to the final four, and uh, I heard it was actually Colin Coward. Look, look, this is good. It's teams that you know, you know, nobody wants to watch Bo Diddley Tech on their run, you know, and all this. I don't know. I kind of fell in love with Butler a couple of years. I think a lot of people were just, I remember when ETSU was a nationally ranked program and the pride that people had around here and the recognition that Johnson City, Tennessee did get throughout the country. It wasn't Las Vegas, it wasn't New York City, but there was recognition that previously the area had not received. And so I look at this and I know what would happen. You win a regular season conference, you get an automatic NIT berth, not important tournament. We're number 69. We're number 69. If I'm thinking 69, I want to think something else. Okay, sue me. We're still trying to do this show for families, but, you know. <laughs> Only nine leagues received multiple bids last year. Only nine conferences, down from 13 five years before. And with the automatic bid for the regular season conference champs to go to the NIT, you can see where SoCon pushing, hey, why don't you go there? You know, that's where you belong. You're a mid-major. should just be happy. And I hate that. You're going to say 251 teams or Division I? Treat them all like Division I teams. And you know what? Maybe that wouldn't happen this year because I was looking at some history. And I do think Wofford has a legit chance at an at-large berth. 
Now, the most publicity probably a team... SOCON's never had two bids. I mean, in the old days, conferences only got one bid. That's what you did. You won your conference tournament, you won the NCAAs. So I, Frank McGuire pulled South Carolina out of the ACC. I said, Screw this. You know, throw away an entire season. We'd rather be judging our entire... He thought independence was the way to go. Then a couple of years later, the NCAAs allowed multiple teams into the tournament, and Frank McGuire didn't look so smart. Okay. But let's just go back 10 years. Appalachian State. They were still in the Southern Conference at that time. And they were 25 and 8. Final record. I think they probably were 25 and 7 or something. I forget what it was before. They, they didn't make the NCAAs, but they made a major push to make it. You may remember there was a big ad taken out, page ad in USA Today saying, look at us, NCAAs, we're Appalachian. We deserve an NCAA berth. Look at our record. Just because we lost in the Southern Conference final, so what? Southern Conference is good. And then head coach Houston Fancher, now at Charlotte, he went on national talk shows to talk about, yes, I think that our team is worthy of an NCAA bid. They were politicking. Sometimes that works for you. It didn't work for them this time. But you know what? Later that year, Appalachian State, they beat Michigan in football. And you got to wonder if that good season that Appalachian State had, that football victory, that that vibe wasn't what put them eventually into the Sun Belt Conference. If that's where you want to be. I'm not sure that you're better off in the Sun Belt than the SOCON. I'm not sure that in 2017, the Sun Belt is more worthy of two bids than the SOCON. We'll know a lot more tomorrow when ETSU plays Georgia Southern, who, like Appalachian State, said, yeah, FBS, that's the way to go. You know, we'll see. I'm not totally sold on that. I'm not totally sold that the Poinsettia Bowl or the Who Cares Bowl is a better reward for your football program than a run in the FCS playoffs. Although, I might say that, I mean, the FCS playoffs, really, I you had to hunt to find them. I really think you had to hunt to find the FCS playoffs. You know, But then again, some might say you have to hunt for the Bulls. Okay. Now, the Mountaineers 25-8 and eight record that year that they really politicked, they did have some victories out of conference against NCAA teams, Virginia, Vanderbilt, but neither were nationally ranked. Tar Heels are number five. Other teams out of the SOCOM that had probably legitimate arguments that, hey, you ought to look at us at an at-large berth to the NCAAs. Davidson, 2009, with Steph Curry, his last year in college. And also, I don't know how many people remember this, 1995 Davidson. They were 25-5, and five, if memory serves, they were 25-3. They lost the SOCON final to Frankie King in Western Carolina. Western Carolina came a shot off the back of the rim at the end in the NCAAs to be the first team that would ever, with a number 16 seed, beat a number one seed in the NCAAs. They played Purdue. Purdue, you remember, under Gene Cady, they always struggled in the NCAAs. But even so, Frankie King, Western Carolina, I think it was their only NCAA tournament berth. They made, did they make the most of it? I don't know. That, to me, would be winning the national championship. But they made a statement, even in defeat, and I know there's no good losses. I'm the guy that says that. I do think Western Carolina fans say, oh, why couldn't that shot have been just a couple of inches shorter and it wouldn't have hit the back of the rim? Yeah, that's legit. You should have that feeling. But at the same time, it's a fun game to watch. And yeah, Western did go longer than most people thought that they would. I don't think Western should hang their hat on that game, but, you know. It was a good run, and it proved, I think, that the Southern Conference, at least by playing with big boys, and the biggest of boys, they were number one seed, Purdue was, that, yeah, that was a legitimate NCAA tournament team. I, I really believe that. I, I think that I would at least say they shouldn't be satisfied, but you could say legitimate team. Legitimate team. I think that's what Wofford did by winning, even making more of a statement they're a legitimate team. Now, 
Davidson, though, in 2009 and 1995, they didn't have a signature victory like Wofford has just accumulated. Other teams that may have cases, uh, you know, I would say, uh, and, and hold on to that thought, I do want to point out that the Southern Conference has a number 19 RPI ranking this year. They were 15th last year. To tell you the truth, I was mildly shocked that the RPI of the SOCON was that low. I, I really thought, you know, 15 last year, and I know it changes, fluctuates every year, uh, but I really thought that the SOCON would be ranked higher than 19, especially, and that did take into account the game against North Carolina. I do believe that ra RPI rating will improve as the year goes on. How could it not? I know that there aren't that many out-of-conference games now for the SOCON to win, but how could it not improve? Now, just talking about Wofford and his at-large birth team, there is a notion, 1991 ETSU Buccaneers, they finished 28-4 and before going to the NCAA tournament, lost to Iowa. They were ranked 15th nationally at the time, and there is some talk that they would not have gotten an at-large berth to the tournament had they have lost to Appalachian State, here they are again, in the SOCON final tournament, tournament final. That's where, you know, that's where they uh, were playing at the time. And the thing is, the Bucks had the 10th seed in the NCAA tournament that year. And that kind of reinforces that notion that they wouldn't have made it, which I find shocking. I mean, if you're the fifth, how can you be, I mean, the 10th seed means at maximum, the tournament committee says you're number 37. Really? I mean, and I... You're the number 15 team in the country, ranked by AP. How could you not get a top four seed? Obviously, the selection committee didn't think a whole lot of the AP rankings. That's how. But to me, I just, you know. But even that team. Hey, Marky, they beat BYU. They beat NC State. They made the tournament that year. True, neither was nationally ranked, though. ETSU 1991 did not beat a nationally ranked team. They only played one. It was Arizona. They got beat by them. Wofford just beat a nationally ranked team. Best seed the SoCon has ever had in modern times is number eight. College of Charleston, 1999, Cougars were nationally ranked. You know why the Cougars were nationally ranked? Well, they'd only lost two games up to that point, but they also beat North Carolina that year. Now, I don't know about you, but a number 10 seed to me says, yeah, ETSU, they might not have gotten that at-large berth back in 91. But 99 and 8 seed, that's the upper half. That makes me think the College of Charleston might have gotten an at-large berth to the NCAAs. And now there are four more teams that make it, for whatever that's worth. Look, it's still not probable that Wofford is going to get in that large... I mean, they may wind up winning the SoCon tournament, and then that makes this whole argument moot. However, I do like it because it is probable that this could be the year the SoCon... Uh, not probable, but it is possible, excuse me. This could be the year that the SoCon gets two bids into the NCAAs and that's because of Wofford last night. They can have a real good year, but they would stumble in the SoCon tournament. Yeah. Of course, problem is, all the rest of the teams in the SoCon, they're not, they, they still got to depend on winning that tournament to make the NCAAs. And really, I would imagine that uh, Wofford, they've got to look and say, well, we can't, you know, just, <laughs> obviously, I mean, even North Carolina has to win the rest, or has to win games to make it, but uh, they may have gotten a fallback policy, Nor but Wofford even would have to win a couple of games in the SOCON tournament, but the, the possibility is out there. That's all I'm saying. You get two bids of the SOCON, I think there's nowhere to go but up from that point. I've always thought it's good basketball. I want to see this happen. Tri-City Sports Now. And that would mean a more cosmopolitan 
area here in the Tri-Cities, more cosmopolitan, bigger and better SoCon means bigger and better sports in the Tri-Cities. We'll see how far Watford's victory against North Carolina takes everybody. Tri-City Sports now comes back after this. Two weekdays on 1420 NBC.